And now we're going to have a few words from Tom Wilkinson, who is the Chief Data Officer for Scotland. Tom, over to you. Thanks very much, Nick and Katrina. Do we have a microphone? Yes, we do. Fantastic. And uh, while I'm waiting for my slides to come up, I'll uh, give a quick response. Oh, here they are. Um, but just to pick up some of those questions as well, um, I think the simulation question, I believe philosophers would say we can't know. And the Wachowskis actually made the matrix as a bit of a fun philosophy lecture on the brain in VAT problem, which you can look up on Wikipedia. Um, the uh, advantage Scotland has of being part of the UK and also being committed to, uh, to following the EU as much as possible means we can hope to take advantage of that, uh, that, that kind of regulatory innovation that Katrina mentioned, as well as the UK's regulatory sandboxing, um, which hopefully means that as well as cultivating an environment which can be financially conducive to AI experts staying in Scotland, um, we can also make sure that the regulation doesn't scare people away. Um, so I, I look forward to innovations on the government side of things as well. Um, so uh, I've got ahead of myself, but good morning, AI Summiteers. Um, as the Scottish Government's new Chief Data Officer, um, it's been a fantastic extra to also step into the AI Alliance's leadership team. Um, and I have to confess up front that I'm not Scottish, I'm Welsh. But as it happens, we have a very long history which includes the, uh, the iron engineering that Katrina talked about, which I'm pretty sure was my hometown that that expertise came from. So, so yeah, personal connections there too. Um, uh, and I have spent half my career in Scotland. Um, and, and that career, although it's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour of digital and analysis roles, um, throughout AI and the related data science have been uh, persistent themes. Um, so in that vein, I've helped advise the academic and private partners of the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office on their use of AI. For example, new attempts to predict global conflict from, from news media. I set up an AI hub for international development, which built skills in the governments of a number of developing countries, as well as trying out innovative new approaches to global problems, most notoriously counting cows from, from, from space using units and, uh, and random forests. Uh, and almost a decade ago, I, I actually helped write the first recruitment frameworks for bringing data scientists uh, in across the UK government. But uh, today, I want to talk not about me, but about the AI Alliance and the amazing work that they have done, and then some of the things that are coming up for the future. One of the most important things that the Alliance team have done so far uh, is put out the Scottish AI playbook. The playbook is an open and practical guide to how we do AI in Scotland, and its beta wiki version went live in 2022, in, in July. It aims to provide a one-stop source of best practice that's been co-created between everyone in the Scottish AI community. We held an inaugural playbook editathon uh, to celebrate Ada Lovelace Day, supported by Datafest Fringe and Ada.Scot, and that focused on inclusivity in technology. We have a calendar of this sort of editathon events coming up over the next year, so I'd encourage everyone to look out for those and to get involved, please. We're currently developing the playbook further with a number of hubs which will help build out subject-specific content, uh, as well as in-depth learning materials. And our first playbook hub is going to focus on AI and data in healthcare, uh, an obvious advantage of, of, of Scotland, given its, its great health service. We're also growing a network of playbook partners uh, in organizations across Scotland and the UK. And that network's not only going to help develop new content for the playbook, but it's also going to promote and develop the playbook into new areas to, to help new audiences engage with it and enrich it, to help co-create it. Our current playbook partners are Cyber Scotland, the JISC National Centre for AI in Tertiary Education, uh, FinTech Scotland, the Data Lab, uh, obviously, uh, Institute of Engineering Technology, and Scotland's Future Forum. 
Um, the playbook is by and for everyone, not just those partners, uh, for everyone who cares about AI in Scotland. So I'd also like to particularly thank our playbook volunteer editors who come from across academia and industry and they make the playbook possible. An example of how the AI Alliance has been uh, using AI for everyone's good is in the recent CivTech challenge that we set out to use AI for improving the accessibility of public services. Now, it's estimated that 84% of the UK population are participating in the digital economy, while only 56% of people who have visual or hearing impairments can do so. Now, obviously, there are other digitally excluded communities as well, those who struggle to navigate technology, those who may not speak English as a first language. But to address this first challenge, the Scottish Government partnered with the company Insights Driven to explore and co-develop a tool to help people with hearing and visual loss fully engage in our digital society. Through direct feedback from people with disabilities, we learned about the frequent difficulties they face when attempting to access digital products or services, mainly due to a lack of discoverability of those services. These discoverability issues can lead to fatigue, a feeling of lost autonomy, and reduced privacy when those people have to seek assistance. Connecting you now by Insights Driven is a low-cost, easy-to-integrate software-as-a-service tool using ethical and inclusive AI in multiple ways. In the front end, facing the users, it uses an intelligent multimodal AI conversation to understand their intent and their sentiment. While at the back end, it uses machine learning to help narrow down the services that might suit them from those available. The tool's analytics also help learn from customer experiences and feedback so that we can make it more intelligent over time. Thanks to human-centered design, I'm sure in Katrina's uh, uh, best, uh, uh, in the true spirit, um, uh, we have been making sure that people with sensory loss have been involved in the design process throughout. Um, and uh, the prototype which was developed for that accelerator was presented at the CivTech Demo Day in February. And I'm delighted to announce today that a pre-commercial agreement has been concluded with Insights Driven to make sure that a product can go live later in 2023 to continue that boost in accessibility of public services. If you want more information about this exciting product, uh, then please look it up on the Scottish AI register, which the minister announced. Continuing in that theme of discoverability, AI can only give users information that's as good as the data it has. And for that reason, Scottish government again made use of CivTech and our partners DTime to pioneer some tools for finding and improving public sector data. The solution being launched called Detective strives to discover the data that other search engines can't. Unlike other search engines, it also provides actionable insights and quality and usage back to the data providers. And another differentiator is that it connects the users with the providers to crowdsource feedback, uh, giving them information about the kinds of use cases that their data are going into. The beta version of Detective is currently running live, and you can get some of their brochures from the Scottish Government stand out in the, uh, the atrium. Um, now, as inspiring as those technical examples are, there's also some pioneering work that the Alliance has been driving in the arts to help push creative boundaries with AI and to test how AI can be enriched or challenged by the arts themselves. To that end, the New Real at Edinburgh University and the Scottish AI Alliance have commissioned five artists to engage the public on AI and help us to move towards a more fair and inclusive use of these technologies. You'll hear more about them shortly from Drew, who leads the project. There's a lot more exciting work that the Alliance are doing that I'd love to tell you about if we had the time. Um, if you do want to learn more, then you can check out our State of AI report on the Alliance's website. For now, let's talk a little bit about the future of the Alliance. Uh, I'm sure many of you will agree that AI has changed a lot in the last two years uh, since we wrote the strategy, whether that's in terms of technology, policy, or the way in which we use it and engage with it. I believe that the values of trust, ethicality, and inclusivity, which sit at the core of our strategy, are even more relevant now than they were two years ago. 
and that they're going to be the make or break of AI in Scotland. So I don't think it's time for us to change course radically in our strategy. And yet, some of the actions from the 2021 strategy do need to be updated and focused even more sharply on where the Scottish Alliance can make a difference. Over the coming weeks, the Alliance team and leadership group are going to lead this light touch updating of the, um, uh, of, the, uh, of, of the strategy, of the actions for the strategy, and they'll be published as a, uh, a lightweight document for everyone to check in on. Um, in parallel, the leadership group has initiated a longer term process to design the next iteration of the Alliance to increase our total impact as a true Team Scotland. As originally intended, the Alliance is going to evolve. We're considering how we can strengthen our partnerships with organizations across Scottish eco ecosystem to prioritize and solve shared challenges together. We're also considering the long-term sustainable operating model um, so that it's informed by the lessons we've learned so far, as well as conversations with organizations with, uh, with similar values uh, internationally. So fulfilling our commitment to be agile and to learn from the best. As with all our work, all of this process will be open and we'll seek everyone's views throughout. We'll reach out to you for sure, but if you have a particular view you want us to hear, then, then please come to us, please let us know. Government has a responsibility to ensure that AI benefits the, the all and not just the few. Um, but it's up to every single one of us here to make sure that AI is a force for good, feeding in our views and perspectives and bringing our human values and creativity when we act as makers of AI, users of AI, or citizens in an AI world. It's today's children in particular who are going to be citizens of that AI world uh, for their whole lives, and they have the biggest stake in this. Uh, and that's why we've also been engaging with children. And our school's work uh, included, uh, <laughs> included um, a school's competition titled Me, Myself, and AI, um, with schools across Scotland, where we challenged them to creatively answer the question, how does AI impact my life? We had entries from 154 teams across 30 classes in nine different schools, using all kinds of different media, slideshows, newsreels, paintings, and comic strips, as well as raps, scratch games, and fully AI-generated entries. I'm pleased to be able to announce you today the winner. Thank you, Steph which is, drum roll please, thank you very much, um, the P5 AI news team from Glencairn Primary School um, who produced an AI news bulletin. Um, now our judges, <laughs> our judges describe this as fun, informative and fascinating um, and I hope I get to see it myself uh, sometime soon. It will be on the website. Um, I, should, I should say that winning team uh, have won themselves a visit from the National Robotarium to their class, and the runners-up will also get a bunch of fun, engaging STEM-related prizes for their classes. Now, to wrap up, because I'm definitely out of time, uh, no speech about AI in 2023 can really avoid mentioning it, so I'll say a few words about ChatGPT. Um, and there's no question that large language models like ChatGPT or now GPT-4 um, each represent a, a huge stride forward in capturing global knowledge concisely, um, as well as in the usability of AI and clearly how much it captures the, uh, the public imagination. Without question, deep artificial neural nets like those generative models um, like many we've used already, are going to continue to uh, change the world and how all of us work. And that's not in question. But I think we do need to maintain some perspective about their capabilities compared to other AI approaches and their substitutability for human intelligence. Just to, uh, not to contradict some of what Katrina was saying about the impact on jobs, but to bear in mind that as she was saying, new jobs will be created. New jobs will come along uh, we're a long way from substituting for a few humans' minds. Um, now, GPT models might excel at tests, even professional expert tests, that proxy for human intelligence, and they might be able to do some really impressive creative things with general knowledge. 
but that doesn't necessarily resemble the work that I see people doing in the knowledge economy day to day. Otherwise, I'd be able to use those tests to hire people in the first place. Uh, instead, that work tends to involve uh, tailoring general knowledge to a specific new context or adapting it to solve a fuzzy real-world problem. The causal machine learning approaches, which help us design solutions for specific problems, they're evolving down entirely separate lines from transformers, and they deserve attention in of themselves. And to me, it still feels like we're a very long way off, even sparks of the artificial general intelligence, which might adapt more flexibly, flexibly to changing contexts. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just say that even if we could match human thinking, we already have nearly 8 billion human intelligences, and many of them remain cheaper to hire than running an LLM model. So, uh, like the unknown number of Kenyans who helped moderate the content of ChatGPT. How we use all of those intelligences collectively to everyone's benefit is precisely where public policy and collaborations like the AI Alliance become most important, more important even than technical breakthroughs. For those reasons, our summit will be bigger than LLMs alone, and I can promise you two days of diverse and entertaining content across the broader landscape of AI. I look forward to enjoying it with you and discussing what gets our synapses firing. Thank you all. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks so much. Tom, that was awesome. Thanks so much. Tom Wilkinson, Chief Data Officer for Scotland.